Right guys, had a lot of people asking for an operation video on the Unimog. That's what we're getting ready to do today. Alright guys, it's Clint from CNC Equipment. We've got a Unimog out here today. Hopefully you can hear me. It's a little windy. Um, I've sold over a hundred of these things. I had a lot of people asking uh, like a walk around and a uh, operating video. So we're gonna take uh, take you through all that today. So if you're not seen, we've got like a service video on one of these. I'll put a link in the description below. So um, we'll start back here in the back. The back was all unfolded. I'll show you how that folds back up and stuff later. But this is actually a case 580, like a D backo. Backo digs really nice in the ring. It does have the uh, case style controls on it. It's got the three levers, swing pedals down here for the uh, backhoe circuit this machine here we actually reload all the cylinders and stuff on so we need to take it out and run it but got toolboxes in here for they come from the military with a uh, chainsaw and a jackhammer and drill in these trucks here so we've actually got a chainsaw there we're going to hook up to auxiliary hydraulics and show you guys how that stuff works so these things are four-wheel drive of course um and i have locking differentials in the front and rear it's all air powered i'll show you how that works later the front loader i think it's made by schmidt it's more of something like you'd see on a uh, smaller uh, farm type tractor it's not super strong but we'll get the job done it actually comes off there's two big bolts down here you take those loose undo your lines it actually pops up off here in a few minutes the rear backhoe will actually come off too You're probably Oh, 20 or 30 minutes, you can take a couple pins out, undo a cylinder, and then you've just got a basic little truck here. So, But uh, there's two hydraulic systems on this thing. We've got a little tank over here, and there's a bigger tank over there. This actually runs off a uh, pump that runs off the engine the whole time. It's like a 7 or 8 gallon per minute uh, pump that runs off the engine, belt driven. And then the other side for the backo has a PTO driven pumps like 30 gallons per minute it runs out of that bigger tank to run the backo and stuff so the front loader and these tools run off the engine driven pump up here so I think that's about it out here um, yeah there's the bigger tank for the hydraulics for the backo there cabs are pretty basic on these dudes they've got a uh, six cylinder mercedes um 352 diesel on them they're not turbocharged or anything i'll show you all the transmission and stuff later on that when we get in there so these are all um got hydraulic disc brakes on they are boosted with air so these things do have an air system on them um they've got some controls back here for the uh front bucket and to rev the engine up so I'll go ahead and start this dude up they're all mechanical and all the stuff you got a hand throttle so to shut them off you push that throttle all the way forward so we've got a disconnect switch over here we'll make sure it's in neutral we got a key switch there well, that buzzy here's a low air buzzer we got our air pressure gauge here. This truck's got like 900 miles. We'll let that uh, build up in the air a little bit. All right, we got air pressure built up to about 75 pounds. You gotta have 75 pounds to work anything in this truck. Anything below that, uh, your brakes aren't gonna work and uh, your auxiliary hydraulics and stuff. So. Down here, they've got a switch for hydraulic tools that powers this hose reel. Kevin's got a uh, hydraulic chainsaw hooked up. So when you pull this out, it's gonna do two things. It's gonna supply hydraulic power. It's actually gonna rev the engine up too. A hydraulic chainsaw going on there. Like I said, they also have a, um, a uh, hydraulic jackhammer and drill, and there's actually an impact too with them, so. All right, Kevin's putting that hose reel back in there. So back here, there's also two more rocker switches. This one here revs the motor up too. And this one up here actually 
lifts the front bucket up. You guys can see that going up there. I'm doing it all from this switch right here. So the reason they have that function here, if you're sitting back here digging by yourself, you can raise that bucket up, shove yourself along, and keep on trucking. So um, this right here is actually a hydraulic cooler. There's a couple fans on there. When it gets hot, those fans will kick on. So any case, uh, 580 backo bucket will fit this. So whether you want to go down to a 12 inch or three foot ditch bucket or whatever, any case uh, backo bucket will fit that thing. All the cylinders are all case. Super easy to get parts for packing kits, aftermarket cylinders, that kind of stuff. So. But uh, this truck's just been serviced and checked out. We've got to take it out and try it out. So we'll hop up in the cab and uh, see what we got going on in there. All right, these cabs aren't super big, but there's plenty of room on the driver's side. I'm like six foot two. Now the passenger side, your knees will be up into your chin over there. Um, in here we've got all of our gauges this is our air pressure gauge we're about 100 pounds right now when i push on the brake pedal you're going to see that other needle come up that's actually the air pressure for the brakes so you got uh, water temperature engine oil pressure that's your fuel gauge for your tank that's your charging over here center one's your tachometer and of course your speedometer got a military light switch here um, right now everything's off to move this lever here you've got to unlock this one that first section has got your stop lights and turn signals you go one more it's going to turn your headlights on so over here you got some blackout markers and this will change from your park and you can dim your or bright your panel lights so one thing on these two i didn't point out outside if you notice they have two sets of lights there's one down on the truck itself and then there's one set of lights up here so actually under the hood there's a switch to switch from upper or lower lights so when you have your front loader on it blocks those lower lights so you want to be using your upper lights so you guys get one of these and say hey the lower lights ain't working or the upper lights ain't working there's a switch under the hood right there that will switch that so windshield wipers you got windshield heaters you guys can see there's actually some lines in there it's kind of hard to see they're actually heated you can see the wires in there for the heated windshield. A little tiny heater here. They don't have much for heat. We got a uh, parking brake here. It's kind of like the old school import trucks. Um, engine sitting right under here. This is a cover. You can check all your fluids and stuff under here. Got your battery disconnect switch. This lever here I just moved. That's actually for your PTO for your backo. It's disengaged right now. These two levers here is actually for your front bucket. The one closest to you does the front loader. There's a sticker there. It shows all that stuff. So, so the transmission is a, basically a four-speed transmission. Now you have a splitter here, so you can split those gear. That, that gives you eight. Over here, you have a high and low range. You got a one and a two. So you actually have 16 gears. Uh, Ford and then you have a reverse so you have eight gears going in reverse and 16 Ford so plenty of combinations there um, this splitter only splits a couple hundred rpm but this shifter's kind of set up so if you was like pushing dirt back in the ditch with the front loader or something you can leave this thing in like second gear and you can kind of shuttle shift just this one from low to reverse so you're just kind of working back and forth it's kind of set up that way so um, this is like a trailer brake controller. This was from military diagnostics down here. So, but the other than that, it's pretty, pretty basic and Spartan in here. You got a little vent there, a view out the back. So, and actually, you guys see there's a Freightliner tag. So, Freightliner imported these for Mercedes um, back in the 80s. I think they made about 2,500 of these trucks. So, this one's actually had a, a 2,000 three rebuild this truck originally is probably 1988 or 87 or so but uh we're gonna get uh fired up and drive over and do a little digging and one more thing i forgot to show you guys back here you see this little uh little handle here this is actually the four-wheel drive shifter so right now it's in two-wheel drive you flip it over one notch you're in four-wheel drive flip it over one more that's actually four-wheel drive and your diff locks so basically this thing, all four tires are pulling, it's just going to pretty much go in a straight line. It's not going to turn real good. So 
But uh, we're going to head over to the dirt bike track and do a little digging with the backhoe and front end loader. We're just driving in high range in second gear. Low range is really not uh, made for driving anywhere. You know, if you're going down the road or anything. Low range is more for uh, working off road, pushing dirt and stuff. So. So we're going to do some digging with the backhoe. So we're going to engage our PTO back here. Got it in gear there. You can kind of hear the pump on it. That's not something you want to leave in running all the time. It takes a lot of power to turn it. So. Come on back up here to the backhoe. So I'll show you guys these levers. I'm not real good on these case controls either, so keep that in mind. But uh, got your boom up and down here, your dipper stick, and this is your bucket curl. And then you got your swings down below here. So first thing we'll do, we'll stick our outriggers down. All right, so I'm going to raise my engine RPM up here in a second but uh, we do have a boom lock here we'll loosen that up I want to show you guys something funky on the case back because a lot of people have problems with this so you guys are looking here I'm pulling back on this boom handle booms coming up but the boom stopped all of a sudden it's not uh, not latching so case has these cylinders that actually have to break over center so if you see up here that cylinders all the way extended right now and it won't come up anymore as much as I try it won't come up so they've got these backhoes where they actually fold over center on them so when you come up what we're going to do we're going to come up the cylinder we're actually going to shove this lever forward it's actually going to extend that ram out and bring that backhoe on back to us so I'll try to do it here real quick you guys can watch so 
to see it locked in place. I don't know if you've seen that, uh, seen it when I did it there or not. It's kind of hard to do one-handed. Yeah, I see it's coming up. It stops. So basically when it comes up and stops there, you got to slam that lever forward real quick. Well, I didn't quite get it. Just like that. So we're going to set you up here and we'll do a little digging. Alright, I'm going to turn my uh, engine RPM up here. to these controls whatsoever. thing is pick it right up off the ground pretty strong backhoe
much do whatever you want to do with it. Alright, I'm not very good on those case controls. It's not what I grew up on, but thing will dig some dirt pretty quick and it's very strong you guys see me setting it around on the ground so I'm gonna show you guys how to uh, fold the back up first thing we gotta do is turn this back all the way over to 90 degrees that way gotta go plumb over till it quits and then you're gonna fold that outrigger up over there all the way over shake some of the dirt off of it all the way over until it hits that bucket and fold this one all the way up so you guys can see right there is actually a backhoe lock right there and there's a lever to unlock it right here you can see rear implement lock so we're going to open it up right now you guys can watch that little arm right there see it come up so the next thing we're going to do is actually tilt this whole backhoe back there's one cylinder and it runs all that so I'm going to do that now. And I'll go ahead and rev the motor up here too. Make it a little quicker. It makes a really compact unit out of it. So when you unfold, there's actually a T-handle right here that pulls that catch up here to release that. So, But uh, that's all there is to that. They've got a hitch back here to uh, pull a trailer or whatever. you got uh, air glad hands back there too. So we're going to turn around and uh, use the front bucket and backfill that uh, ditch back in we just dug out. Trying to get a little of that mud off there. Like I said, the front end loader is like something more you'd see on a farm track or something like that. So it's not going to be aggressive like a regular, regular loader backhoe would. So. I do have this thing in four-wheel drive right now. I'm going to put it in second gear in low range. I'd say the loader's not the fastest thing on the front, but it gets the job done.
All right, we got that all backfilled, let that settle out. We're gonna head back on over to the shop. High range. We'll try to go over a couple of these uh, motocross jumps here. We are in four wheel drive yet. They're pretty steep hills. Not a problem. These hills don't look real steep on camera, but they're steep. I'm gonna kick her out of four-wheel drive. have like an eight foot wheelbase which means they can turn around in a very tight spot as you can see so the military designation for these is actually a, called a C tractor it's SEE it stands for small emplacement excavator made to get in tight spots shop here. Alright, so hopefully I answered a lot of questions. Keep in mind, I'm not a professional in those case controls. I'm not used to them very much, but the backhoes do dig very well. Front end loaders, I like to say they're more like a small uh, tractor. They will backfill a ditch and do stuff, but as far as cutting grade and stuff like that, probably not going to be the best thing for that. These things are on coil springs, so they're a little bit bouncy with all that weight and stuff, but when you fold that backhoe back up, they're not, uh, not quite as bad. Like I say, you can take the front loader and the backhoe off and make a cool little four-wheel drive truck too. So 
But uh, you guys liked what you've seen here today. You got any more questions? Definitely let me know in the comments. This uh, machine will be up for sale. We do have a few more left that we're selling. We've got a few over there. We've sold most of them that we had. So, but uh, definitely give us a call. I'll leave all of our information in the description down below. And you can always check our website out too. So, we'll see you guys next time.